Oh, hey, Trista. TGIF, huh? Yeah, I guess. So what's up? Not much. What are you up to in here? I'm just trying to get started on this project. Homework on a Friday afternoon? Are you nuts? Well, it's not exactly homework. I was talking to Mr. Essig. The science teacher? Yeah, the science teacher. Anyways, I was talking to him this afternoon about different careers in science. I told him I'd really like to go to college someday, but you know. Yeah, but it's really cool that you want to go to college, though. He said that I should really start putting together a portfolio of my work. I guess if I do some science-related projects while I'm in school, it'll give me a better chance of getting some scholarships in a couple of years. I'm impressed. So he told me about this national science competition that looks pretty cool. I mean, I think I'm going to do it. I mean, just doing a project will be a good start to my portfolio. But I'd really like to win first place, you know? Problem is, I only have two weeks to put something together. I'm trying to get started pronto. So what's the deal? What's this project all about? It's called the Fantastic Flying Machine Discovery Project. It's a competition against students across the country. Basically, you focus in on some sort of flying machine, like a helicopter or an airplane, and you create some sort of presentation to show how it works and how it's made. You can do a website or a written report or anything, really. Anything? Yeah, I need a flying machine to focus on. That does sound pretty cool. Well, you should think for a minute. I mean, if you want to win this competition, maybe you should try to take a different approach. Think about how most people would approach this project and try to avoid doing the predictable. What do you mean? Well, for starters, what do we have here? A jet, an airplane, a rocket, and a hot air balloon. Cross them off? Okay, I see what you're saying. There'll be obvious choices because they're right here on the poster. What other flying machines are there? Yeah, what's one kind of flying machine that kind of stands out from the rest? Easy enough. Check it out. Perfect. The Goodyear blimp definitely stands out. When I think of flying machines, it's not the first thing that pops into my mind. And it's kind of weird, you know, but it's cool. This big inflatable thing floating through the air. So there's your topic, genius. What would you do without me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder if I should do a written report or hear something a bit more interesting. What about a documentary? Do it. I don't have access to a video camera. My dad has one. Do you think he'd let me borrow it? You? I'm borrowing it. What do you mean? I mean, I'm going to help you. Oh, really? Really. You're going to need my brains to make this video fly. Well, it does say that we can enter group projects. So where do we start? Hey! Hey! Let's see. We need to find out, one, how blimps are made, and two, how they work. I think we should start out with how they're made. I guess. <laughs> we can find out the technical names of all the different parts of the blimp and what they do, kind of like looking at the blimp and taking it apart piece by piece. We definitely should do that. But what if we ask the question why they were made first instead of jumping right into how they're built and how they work? That's not a bad idea. We could find out the history of the blimp and what they've been used for throughout the years. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I know that they use them at football and baseball games on TV, but that's obviously not all that they're used for. Right. I wonder who we could interview about this stuff. Here we go. Airship Info. The Lighter Than Air Society. It's a museum. Wow, and it's right here in town. I bet that's only a five-minute bike ride from here. You want to pay them a visit? Sure, but let me give them a phone call first. I'll see if I can set up an interview with someone. Sounds like a plan to me. Today we'll be exploring the history of the blimp. We're here at the Lighter Than Air Museum in Akron, Ohio, where we hope to find the answers to our questions about the invention and evolution of the blimp. Mr. Joe Huber of the Lighter Than Air Society has a lot of experience talking about blimps, balloons, and other lighter than air vehicles and has agreed to talk with us today. So Mr. Huber, you're a member of the Lighter Than Air Society. Can you explain what lighter than air means? Well, our society operates on the principle that anything which is lifted because the internal gas is lighter than air is something we're interested in. 
and this could be anything from hot air to helium to any hot gas. What was the first lighter than air crafts? The Montgolfier brothers in 1783 came up with a paper balloon and that balloon was filled, they thought, with smoke was the lifting gas and was the beginning of man flight. How did we get from those first hot air balloons to the Goodyear blimp? In a whole series of stages. The first problem was they just went with the wind. So in order to get to a blimp, you have to find some way to put a motor on and put fins on it so it has control. And from there, we had to go from materials for the hull up to the current rubberized fabric. And we had to go from smoke to helium. What are blimps used for these days? Uh, the biggest use at the moment are for advertising, the Goodyear, the uh, various other blimps you see. But currently, there is a tremendous push to use blimps as low altitude satellites up at 70,000 feet. And a number of countries are trying to use blimps for that purpose. Well, now we have a definition for lighter than air. It's named for vehicles that can fly because they use some sort of lifting gas. Right, like hydrogen, hot air, and as far as the blimp is concerned, helium. Mr. Huber told us a little bit about the evolution of blimps, too. We learned what they've been used for throughout the years. What they've been used for in present times. And what they could be used for in the future. The world of lighter than air is filled with jargon, or special words that are used by people studying a specific field of knowledge. For example, lighter than air means any aircraft that depends on buoyancy for its lift. To make vehicles lighter than air, you fill it with hot air, helium, or hydrogen. A hot air balloon is the easiest type of lighter than aircraft to get off the ground. Simply heat the air inside the balloon, called an envelope, and away you go. Of course, it's hard to go someplace specific in a balloon since it's driven by the wind. Once you get an aircraft off the ground, it's nice to be able to steer. When you add ways of controlling where you are going, the vehicle is called an airship. Airships go by many different names such as dirigibles, zeppelins, or blimps. The term dirigible has been used since the 1850s when men first started to direct the flight path of their lighter than air craft. It's used to denote any steerable airship. As airships became larger around the turn of the century, they needed a structure to hold their shape. The inventor of the rigid structure inside an airship was Count Ferdinand Graf von Zeppelin. And so these types of rigid airships are called Zeppelins. The term blimp comes into our language during World War I, and it simply means an airship that has no internal structure. So let's recap lighter than air jargon. A hot air balloon is a lighter than air craft, but not a dirigible. An airship is lighter than air and a dirigible. A Zeppelin is a rigid dirigible and an airship, but not a blimp. And a blimp is a non-rigid dirigible and an airship, but not a Zeppelin. Got that?